طيب بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the salutations upon the messenger alayhi salatu was salam and upon his family and his companions and upon all those who follow upon his guidance into the establishment of the last day to proceed ikhwan wa subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta al-alimul hakeem Glory belongs to you, Ya Allah. Verily, we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. And indeed, you, Ya Allah, you are the all knower and the all wise. You are the all knower and the all wise. Allahumma inna na'udha bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa min qalbin la yagsha' wa min nafsin la tashba' wa min du'a'in la yusma' Verily, Ya Allah, we seek refuge with you from knowledge that has no benefit and from a heart that has no fear. And from a soul that has no satisfaction nor contentment, and from a dua that goes unanswered, and from a dua that goes unanswered. To proceed, Ikhwan, for Nawasiru Ma'akum, Bi Hadihi Laylatil Mubarakatil Karima, Aunan Min Al Rahman Al Rahim. So we continue in this blessed and noble night of ours, seeking the aid and the assistance of our Lord, the most merciful and the most compassionate. Musafidina fi. تعليمنا اللغة العربية اللغة العربية as we continue to learn and to educate ourselves from the science of the Arabic language from the science of the Arabic language فالي أصحاب الكتب so for those that have the book يا إخوان لا نزال على صفحة خمس وخمسين for those that have the book then we're still on page number fifty five on page number Fifty-five. طيب فقال المؤلف. So the author he says, سر في رعاية الله. He says, go, or we can say travel, within the protection of Allah. Within the protection of Allah. ثم قال سافر في رعاية الله. So then he says, travel within the protection. Of Allah, within the protection of Allah. فالآن عندنا بعض الكلمات. So now we have some words, and we're going to use the words في هذه الجمل. في هذه الجمل. Within these sentences. طيب. فالأولى. So the first sentence he says, اذهب في رعاية الله. Go within or among the protection of Allah. The protection of Allah. طيب كلمة ذهب يا إخوان تعلمناها قبل the word ذهب we learned this word before بحمد الله ذهب طيب ذهب as for the word ذهب has many meanings يا إخوان from them to go or you can say he went to go or he went أو كذلك يأخذ رأيا. You can also say that the word ذهب means to hold a position, to hold an opinion. So you can say, for example, ذهب العلماء إلى هذا. You can say ذهب العلماء العلماء عفوا العلماء إلى هذا. You can say the scholars went to that, meaning they have that position. They have that position. Have that. No, that they have that particular position. The scholars have that opinion, that position. So the word ذهب can mean to go, or he went, or to have a position, to have an opinion. ذهب العلماء إلى هذا. 
the scholars went to that position. No. Oh, yeah. ثم قال توجه توجه وكلمة توجه يا إخوان تستخدم في معنى اذهب وفي معنى سافر وفي معنى قابل The next word he says توجه توجه You're commanding someone توجه To make this توجه Now this word توجه has a few meanings. It can also mean to go. It can also mean to face the direction of. So pay attention there. Tawajjaha. It can also mean to face, to turn towards. Write this word down, Yahwan. Tawajjaha. Tawajjaha. It can mean to face or he face. Can also mean to turn towards. It can also mean to go. No. So you can say tawajjah ila al masjid. Go to the masjid. Or you can say tawajjah ila al masjid. Go towards the masjid. No. So we have dhahaba and tawajjaha. And they can use they can be used together or the same way. Dhahaba to go. Tawajjaha to go. Or tawajjaha also means to face or to turn towards. No. Thumma call it Then he says ride or get on board. From the verb rakiba. From the verb rakiba. From the verb rakiba, ta'alamna rakiba qablu. We learned this word before, alhamdulillah. Rakiba, to ride or to get on, to ride or he rode. It can also mean to get on. Irakab ala sayyara, get on the car. Or get in the car. Get on board the car. No. Tayyip. The next word is Gadara. Gadara. Wa Gadara ta'alamna ha qablu ya ikhwan. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Kayf anta shaykh? Alhamdulillah. And we had the word Qadara before Yekhwan in the earlier lessons. Qadara. Qadara means to depart. To depart. To leave. Qadara. Qadara al Muslimuna min Mecca. The Muslims departed from Mecca. The Muslims departed from Mecca. Gadara, 25 times. If it's new to Yekhwan, remember, نَكْتُبُ كُلَّ كَلِمَةٍ جَدِيدَةٍ خَمْسَةً وَعِشْرِينَ مَرَّةٍ أو خَمْسًا وَعِشْرِينَ مَرَّةٍ Remember, in our program, we write all of the new vocabulary words 25 times. Every new word, we're going to write it 25 times. Inshallah. So, Gadara is to depart. To leave. Gadara. Tayyip. Alati ba'da. Next word. Irhal. Min fi'li rahila. The next word is from the verb rahila. 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 Means to travel. The travel. Just like the word safara. Safara. To travel. You can also say to leave. No. Also, you can say to leave. Rahila. 
rahila in say rahilat aisha to ila al yaman you say aisha travel to al yaman aisha travel to al yaman so rahila 25 times ikhwan rahila to travel walati ba'da next word sa'ada 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 means to ascend to ascend to go up to ascend to go upward to ascend صعد النبي على المنبر. The Prophet of Allah ascended the minbar. He went up on the minbar. صعد to go up. First time we have this word, Yahwan, twenty-five times. وآخر كلمة and the last word. Habata Habata Ya Habitu Habata And the last word of this chapter or from the last word of this this exercise here is Habata to descend Habata to descend or to land Habata 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 You can say to land mashallah to descend, to come down. Now, طيفيدة يا إخوان a benefit. هنا أحيانا نتعلم الكلمة ونتعلم عكسها ونتعلم عكسها. Sometimes we learn a word. And then we learn the opposite of the word. So instead of translating the word, and na'ti bil ta'arif wa an na'ti bil aks. So now instead of translating the word into English all the time, once we learn a word and we learn its opposite, when we give the word, just bring the opposite. For example, ta'alamna sa'ada. We just learned the word sa'ada. So we say Sa'ada Aksu Habata. So we say Sa'ada is the opposite Aksu Habata. And it's going to help your Arabic tremendously. When you don't go right to English all the time, but you translate the word by giving the meaning of the word by bringing its opposite. So instead of saying Sa'ada means to ascend. We say Sa'ada, we say Sa'ada, or Sa'ada, is the opposite of Habata, of Habata. And this is the level we want to get to, Ya Ikhwan, where instead of translating everything, and this is a crutch to the Muslim, in many of the scholars' opinion. You translate everything, it becomes a crutch. If the Quran wasn't translated, every Muslim would have to learn at least the understanding of the Quran. But since it's translated, I don't have to study the Arabic now because someone translated it. But that's incorrect. We still have to learn the intent of Allah's Messenger to worship Allah's Messenger, not upon someone's opinion. Many times a person translates and he's wrong. She's wrong. Or they may use a translation that is correct but not accurate. But you don't know. We don't know. So we think he's saying was correct, but in reality, he's not accurate. And that happens a lot in the, the, in the translation of the Quran and in the translation of many of the books of a hadith. So I, we give an example of that, Ya Khwan, that shall humble all of us. 
في القرآن قال الله تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم في بداية معظم الصور in the beginning of most of the chapters of the Quran not all but most Allah Ta'ala says بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم and the translation that many of us have learned is not accurate. When we have learned, the translation here is in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, you can say, or the likes. The point here is in the name of Allah. That's not an accurate translation. What does it mean? How can something be in the name of Allah? You still need an explanation for that. Many of the ulama, they explain this verse and you will not translate it in the name of Allah after that. Once you see how the companions understood it. My point here, Ikhwan, anna huthana jami'an ala تعليمي اللغة العربية. The intent here is to encourage all of us with not the translations, يا إخوان, but to study and to learn whatever we can learn from the Arabic language and stop depending on people's translations. طيب نرجع إلى درس. We return back to the lesson, يا إخوان. طيب و. Before that, Ikhwan, Na'ti bi Ahsani Atarjama. Before that, we'll come with the more accurate translation. And that will be instead of in the name of Allah, it will be by the name of Allah. Or uh, or with the name of Allah. But not in. Not in, ya Juan. You wouldn't translate this bad in here. La. You wouldn't translate this bad, translate this bad to be in. This bad is harful uh, isti'ana. It's a particle of seeking aid, seeking assistance. So you would say, by the name of Allah or with the name of Allah, I seek the help of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. So you wouldn't say in, you would say by. Allah Alam. In Allah knows best. Ta'i. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Unduri la shash, ya Look at your screens. Qala rabi'an. Istami' wa raddid. Listen and repeat. Listen and repeat. فأنا أقولها وأنتم تقولونها بعدي وأنتم تقولونها بعدي. So I'll say it and you say it after me. I'll say it and you say it after me. Or rather, we'll take turns inshallah with our beloved brothers inshallah ta'ala who we have tonight. Our beloved brother Yusuf and Shaykh Naki. Say it. So I'll read the first and we'll take turns inshallah. إخوان. كم تكلف الرحلة? So he says, how much... Does the trip cost? Kam to Kalifurrih Lato. Five Sheikh Yusuf, you read the second. Tala. Kam to Kalifu Atakirato. I sent Atakirato. So he says here, how much does the ticket cost? Tathkiratu is the ticket. No. طيب فائدة إخوانا benefit. The word تذكرة can also be a receipt. Can also be a receipt. التذكرة تو. The word التذكرة تو can also be التذ. شو بيكسره؟ تذكرة تو can be the ticket. It can also be the receipt. You take your wife out. You go to the restaurant, and you say, Aina a tathkira. Where's the receipt? Let me give you the bill. 
now. Can also be the the bill. No. Oh yeah. Father Shiknakir, a thalith and number three. Al Gwada o Al is the lunch is lunch or the lunch Al Gwada o Hamza Longation Al Gwada o is Taamu Al Gwada the food of the lunch meaning the lunch Al Gwada o now Kalima tun jadida, a new word, ya khwan, 25 times. al wada o the lunch. No. Tayyip. Father Sheikh Yusuf al-Rabi'ah, number four. Tfadha. Bismillah. Kam tukallifu al-fahwatu. I sent Kam to Kalifu Al Kahwatu. How much does the coffee cost? How much does the coffee cost? Kalimatu Al Kahwa, the word, you look at your screens, Yahwan, Al Kahwa is the coffee. Al Kahwatu. Al Kahwatu is the coffee. Al Kahuatu, the coffee. Twenty five times, eh? Al Kahuatu. Al Kahuatu. Thy. Who's turning, eh? One. Shake no kid, father. Al Khamis, number five. I sent. How much does the book cost? How much does the book cost? طيب. فائدة يا إخوانا بنفيد. لماذا هنا يكلف؟ بدلا من تكلف. So here, in this sentence, why does it have a ya when the other sentences or some of them had a ta? Why does this one have a ya? Who can answer? Is it referring to he, him? All right, sense is referring to the he. And what is the he? What is it here? He's charging. Mm, close. Super close. What is the What is the it? What are you asking about? Uh, the coffee. Mm, and this one, Al Khamisa, number five. Yeah, you what the you Khalifu? What you asking the cost oh, of oh, of what? I'm sorry, yeah, you Khalifu. How much is the book? Hey, so the he look here, Yehwan. Look at your screens, inshallah Taala. Look at your screens here. Oh, yeah. here, Yehwan, the author he says, Kam you Khalifu. Al Kitabu Kam Yukalifu Al Kitabu Kam Yukalifu Al Kitabu. Oh, yeah. So we translate it first, Yahwan. And then we're going to give a benefit, inshallah ta'ala. If you don't get this benefit right now, la ba's no karruhu inshallah ta'ala fima ba'd. Fima ba'd. If you don't get the benefit now, don't worry about it. It's gonna come back again. We're going to say it again at another time. But the translation is, how much does the book cost? How much does the book cost? Okay. Pay attention here, Yaqwan. We'll give you a benefit, inshallah ta'ala. Okay. Benefit number one. لِكُلِّ فِعْلٍ Fa'il. Benefit number one. 
Write this down, Yahwa. Likulli fi'lin fa'il. For every verb, there is a door. Likulli fi'lin fa'il. For every verb, someone did it. If it's a verb, someone had to do it. Write that down, Yahwa. Tremendous benefit. لِكُلِّ فِعْلٍ فَاعِلٍ With every doer, uh, every verb, there's a doer. Have them a full mi'akhwan. You guys understand that? طَيْبٍ أَثَانِيَةُ Benefit number two. Benefit number two. كَيْفَ نُعَرِّفُ أو كيف نعرف الفاعل How do we identify the door? We mentioned for every verb there's a door. That was number one. Number two, how do we know where the door is? How can we find the door? Look at this sentence again. Look at our sentence, Yahwan. What's the sentence? Kam you kali full kita. How much does the book cost? Where is the verb? The verb is yukallifu, to cost. The verb yukallifu means to cost. That's the verb. Yukallifu means to cost. What was our second benefit? Our first benefit was what? Likulli wa alaykum salam wa fa'il. For every verb, there's a doer. So whenever you come across a verb, Yahwan, when you come across a verb, you're going to ask yourself a few questions. Whenever you come across a verb, you're going to ask yourself a few questions. Alright, so now we have Inda al Af'al. Inda al Af'al. Anytime we come across a verb, Coming across, ver coming across verbs, we're going to ask ourselves a few questions. What do you think the first question is, Yahwan? See us paying attention. Huh? Uh, well, uh, first question would be like, what is the what is the doer, and what is the thing that? Close. Now we're talking about when we come across verbs. Anytime you come across a verb, whatever the verb is, the first thing I want you to ask yourself is what? Probably what is what is the uh, the noun or verb? Mm, close. Before that, something more important than that. Who's doing the verb? Huh? Who's doing the verb? Couple of that. Before that, something the most important thing. Before who did it? Who did it? Ah. Um, huh? Boy, the first thing you're going to ask yourself, Ya Juan, is. Is. Mel ma'ana. Is what is the meaning? Oh. Before you ask yourself who did it. Mm -hmm. What is the verb? Ah, The first thing you're going to ask yourself is who did it? Who did it? You guys are reading the Quran. You're reading the books of the Hadith. You come across a verb. I want you to stop. And the first thing you're going to ask yourself is, what is the meaning? That's number one. Before you can identify who did it, learn the meaning of the verb. Most important. 
So this is with regards to verbs, not nouns. We're talking about verbs. Write this down, Yechuan. When you come across a verb, you're going to ask yourself a few questions. First question is, Mal ma'ana? What is the meaning of the verb? What is the meaning of the verb? Type asani now. Second question. One of you said it. After you know the meaning, you're not done. You're going to ask yourself what? Doing it. I sent men comma or oh, men fa'alahu. Men fa'alahu. Who did it? Second question. Men fa'alahu. Who did it? Who did it? If you brothers and sisters understand this, فَأَنْتُمْ عَلَىٰ خَيْرٍ كَثِيرٍ And you're upon a lot of good, ya ikhwan. Two simple questions with, with regards to verbs. Number one, مَا الْمَعْنَى What is the meaning? What is the meaning? Uh, what is the meaning? Number two, مَنْ فَعَلَهُ Who did it? Who did it? The third question, Yaquan, we didn't get to this part. Third question is, Kaifa Arafta. How do you know he did it? Third question is, Kaifa Arafta. Kaifa Arafta. How do you know he did it? Kaifa. How do you know? How do you know? Meaning, how do you know he did it? Put your mute on, yeah, Juan. You brothers and sisters there, put your mute on until you speak. Put your mute on until you speak, Yehwan, to make it more clear for everyone else. Put your mute on, Yehwan. Toy. Assalamu alaikum. You said, how do you know he did it? I sent. Yehwan, put your, put your mute on. Look at your screen and put your mute on and, and, until you speak. Then unmute yourself. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of static. Someone, uh, put your mute on your Juan until you speak. Oh, yeah. Mithalan, Mithalan, yeah, Juan. An example, an example. Oh, yeah. Nakul, uh, Kataba Aliyun Ad Darosa. Pay attention here, Yahwan. This is our example here. Buy it. Kataba Aliyun Ad Darsa. Let's translate Yahwan. Ali wrote the lesson. Kataba Aliyun Ad Dars. Ali wrote the lesson. Ali wrote the lesson. Toy. Question number one. Toy. Liku uh toy. Faida tun al ula. Benefit number one. Likuli fear in a fail. Every verb or for every verb, there's a door. Toy. Ida na mur al al afaal. Nas alu an fusana ba'adul as ila. Whenever we come across a verb, we're going to ask ourselves some questions. Toy. Kataba fear. Kataba is a verb. Toy. Question number one. ما معنى الفعل What's the meaning of the verb? طيب كتب means to write كتب means to write كتب means to write طيب So our first question We came across a verb كتب is our verb 
What does kataba mean? Kataba means to write. Athani. Question number two. Man fa'al al fi'l. Who did it? Who did it? Okay. Kataba aliyun. Ali wrote. Ali wrote. So the first, second question is who did it? Man fa'ala who? Who did it? Ali. Ali did it. Question number two was man fa'ala who? Who did it? The answer is Ali. Ali did it. Question number three. What was question number three, Ikhwan? كيف عرفت؟ How do you know Ali did it? أريدكم أن تنظروا إلى شيء واحد فقط. We want you to look at one thing only to determine the doer of the verb. One thing and one thing only. That's it. وهو آخر الاسم الذي جاء بعد الفعل. And that is that you're going to look at the end of the noun that comes after the verb. So here we have two nouns that come after the verb. Aliyun and Adars. Both of them are nouns. So we're going to look at the end of them. We have Aliyun, Dhamma, and Darsa, Fatha. Ali has a Dhamma, Aliyun. And Darsa has a Fatha, Darsa. The one that has a dhamma is the door. Every time. That's it. All you're going to see is the ending of the noun that comes after the verb. If if it ends in a dhamma, it's the door. That's it. So, if عرفته, how do you know? كيف Arafta. Uh, How do you know that Ali is the doer? You're going to say, Huwa marfu'ir. It is in the nominative case. Or we can make it easy and say, Tantahi bil dhamma. It ends in dhamma. Meaning that it's marfu'ir. Kayf arafta. How do you know? How do you know? You're going to write, Tantahi bil dhamma. It ends in dhamma. Tantahi bil dhamma. That's it. It ends with a dhamma. Or you can say, huwa marfu'ur, that it is nominative. Tantahi bil dhamma. That's it, ya khwan. That's way back in the news, somewhere way back. Yeah, that's way in the earlier. That's why we mentioned the benefit of reviewing and reviewing and reviewing. For example, so all you gotta do, Yehwan, whenever you find a verb, first question whenever you come across a verb is gonna be what's the meaning of this verb? You stop, what's the meaning? Especially in the Quran. Don't just read the, especially you brothers that can read already the Arabic, don't just jump right into the translation. I'll give you a benefit that will humble us. When we read the translation of the Quran, we're not reading the Quran. The Quran is not the translation, ikhwan. And it should be something that will instill all of us, our children, our wives, our husbands, to learn how to read the Quran. So we can say we read it. Because when we read the translation, you can't say that's the Quran. Many of the brothers and sisters you see on the Facebook or the different apps, they say Allah says in the Quran. And then they bring the verse in English. They just lied upon Allah. And that's haram. Or you see many of the brothers and sisters, they say the message of Allah said. And they bring the hadith in English. And that's uh, not correct. And that's a lie upon the message of Allah. You should say this is the translation. Or this is the meaning rendered into English or whatever language you're bringing. But you can't say Allah said and then lie on Allah. You can't say the message of Allah said and then lie on the message of Allah. That's not allowed, yeah, Kwan. Uh, question. Hold on. You remember the, uh, 
I think it was a day or so ago. You remember the word I asked you about? No. Uh, what was it? Kailula? Kailula, no. At first, in the beginning of the Hadith, it didn't have Kailula. So okay. What I came up with when I first... Uh, when I first started try when I first started translating it, it said something else. No. But then I thought about wait a minute, wait a minute, it must be something it's something wrong because this is saying it is then said no you know, do whatever. Then I then I looked at the other word at the end of the sentence was was I guess they, if if you would say it would say uh Keel, uh Keela. no it turned out it was K, uh, uh, K Lu, K Lu, or something like that. Mashallah. No. And then when I went and look, and then I looked at the word again before they put the heading up on the hadith, K No. Which means took a nap. It was it was it was referring to something about speech, like the no. ending of the word. I was like, wait a minute. No, I mean, uh, words have different different meanings, yeah, Juan. I it. I was like, no wonder it keeps saying. No. See, it's saying and it's saying that until I became familiar with the word that is from that from you know from that word Kila come a lot of other words. No, you have the like the, the derivatives of the word or words that are extracted from the same root of the word. You're gonna learn right. that also, yeah, Juan. Like, I remember you said that. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm doing something wrong. No, so I can, can make the mistake. Uh, yeah, all of us, yeah, Juan. Just because. Word. Just because your brothers and sisters are studying Arabic, it doesn't mean that you're not going to error. We're going to make a lot of errors, Ikhwan. The more you translate, the more you're going to error. The more you speak, the more you're going to make mistakes. The point is not that you make a mistake. That's that's fine. You're human. But you make a mistake and the correction is presented to you and you don't rectify. That's the one that's blamed. We're not blamed for making an error. Many of the people, you're going to make error. You're human. But the correction is in front of you. And you don't rectify. Now that person is blamed. That's different. No. Play another year that does it, Juan. I said. No. Yeah, that's just me. No, all of us, yeah, Sheikh. So now the point here, yeah, Juan, whenever you come across a verb, you're going to ask yourself firstly, what's the meaning of the verb? Second thing, you're going to ask yourself, who is doing the verb or who did the verb? And then, how do I know? All you're going to do is look for the noun that's going to follow. doesn't have to be directly after, but it's going to follow. If it's marufur, if it's nominative, meaning that it ends in a dhamma, it's the doer. Right? Uh, I have a question. Father. So any sentence with a verb will have a noun that's marufur. Any sentence that has a verb, the brother's asking, any sentence that has a verb will have a noun that's model four, yes and no. Because now there's sometimes that is going to be model four, but you can't see it. Okay, okay, okay. And we'll get to that later. It's still model four, but it just doesn't end in a dhamma. And that's going to come later on. But that's a good question. Okay. Right. right now we're going to go khutwa ten khutwa. Right now we're going to go step by step. But what the brother is saying, there are many words that they're not four, they're nominative, but you can't see the dhamma. It's there, but you can't see it. It's not written. Right. Can, can we have just like one example? Just one. Uh, play. <laughs> An example, ya khwan. An example, ya khwan. Tari. Naqool. Salla. Musa. Al-Zuhra. Salla. Musa. Al-Zuhra. Tari. Let's add our vows, ya khwan. Salla. Musa. Al-Zuhra. Let's translate. Musa prayed al dhuhr the afternoon prayer. Dhuhr. al dhuhr is the midday prayer. 
صلى الفعل صلى as the verb موسى الفاعل موسى as the doer now when you look at موسى لا توجد ضمة it doesn't have a ضمة but this is an exception like that this is the point it's still marafur but you can't see the ضمة you can't see the ضمة because of this alif this is actually alif so this alif blocks the appearance of Bobama. Wouldn't that be Aleph Maxora right there? Yeah, it's Aleph Maxora. But it's an Aleph. Many people think this is a yeah. There's no dots there. That's actually an Aleph. It's called the Aleph Maxora. It's not a yeah. I had a feeling you was going there. I just needed to see right. it. Lab books. <laughs> On the Arabic, many exceptions. Right, but we'll get there step by step, yeah, Juan. Step by step. Inshallah. As I remember, our Sheikh used to say, Hafidh Allah Ta'ala, many of the students nowadays, they busy themselves with stuff that's important, but the things that are more important, they bypass. He says, a person may argue, oh, this Sheikh made a mistake here, or that Sheikh made a mistake there. And that same person doesn't know what to say when you go in the bathroom. Or that same person doesn't know the dua you say after the salah. But that same person doesn't know the dua after, uh, in Rukur. So he's arguing something that's important, but not as important as you making those dua, for example, there. So we go step by step, inshallah. We'll get to that level in Bithnillah ta'ala. This is more important, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah bless you all. All right. But now to the question. So all of this, we come back to our first question. لماذا يكلف هنا وتكلف هنا so here, why do we have the yukallif with the ya? Yukallif al kitab. How much does the book cost? And here, kem to kallif al qahwa. How much does the coffee cost? But we have a ta. The first verb has a ya, the second has a ta. Why is that? Stay, pay attention here, ya khwa. Right. Our verb is yukallifu. Sorry, let's make it easy, Ikhwan. Our verb is kallafa. What does kallafa mean? Who pay, who's paying attention? Maybe how much? Uh, uh, you can say that, how much to cost. Now, طيب. In the mudari, in the present tense of the verb, it changes slightly. You say, yukallifu. He or it costs. In the in the present. Now we're coming into the present tense. So you add the ya for him, for he. So if the doer, Afwan, if the doer is masculine, then you're going to say he, huwa. It's going to be ya. But if it's feminine, then this ya becomes a ta. So whatever we're talking about, if you say yukallifu al-kitab or kem yukallifu al-kitab How much does the book cost? If the book is masculine, you're going to use the ya. If the book is feminine, you're going to use the ta. So we'll get to that point inshallah. But that's what the author wrote in the book. As he says, kem tu. He adds the ta because the doer is feminine. The doer is coffee. Coffee is feminine. So you use the feminine pronoun of the verb. Kem tu kallifu al qahwatu. Pay attention here. Yeah. Kem. Now we use the ta only because what? The doer is feminine. In Arabic, it has to match, not like English. So the doer is where? The doer is al qahwa. How do you know that al qahwa is the doer? We just learned this. How do you know? Tantahi dhamma. It ends in a dhamma. That's it. Look at the ending of the word. That's it, ya khwan. If you see the dhamma on the noun that comes after a verb, you just found the doer. That's it. Tayyip. So al qahwa is feminine. 
So therefore, we use the feminine pronoun, which is the ta. Right? So you say, kam tu kalifu. Right? And the second one, kam you kalifu al kitabu. Now we're going to change the pronoun because the doer is masculine. So now we don't use the ta, we use the ya. Kam you kalifu al kitabu. So now the ta is a ya. Why? Because the doer is masculine. What's the doer here? Al kitab, the book. The book is mudakar, masculine. So therefore, we use the masculine pronoun. In Arabic, everything has to match. You're talking to a female, you speak in the feminine gender. Use the verb, going back to the female, use the feminine pronoun of the verb. You're talking to a male, you use the masculine gender. So, a uh, question. Mm. All right, so, I see what you did with uh, the Khalifa. Mm. So you put the you put the tab for the man and you I mean uh you put the tab for the uh the female. Yeah. And you put the the yeah for the male. That's it. This with every verb. Every verb. Every, every verb. Every verb. No. So this is how, so would this be this, so this in, is in the how, in the present tense. In the present tense. Okay. That's what I was okay, I got not you. in the past tense. Okay. All right. You just we, give, it we give one more example, yeah, Juan. We give one more example. طيب مثلا نقول يصلي محمد طيب we say يصلي محمد محمد prays or you can say is praying محمد prays or is praying both of them are allowed it can be the present continuous طيب فنقول الآن تصلي عائشة تصلي عائشة طيب تصلي عائشة طيب pay attention here يا إخوان so now we say عائشة عائشة praise or is praying. طيب انظر إلى الأولى. Look at the first sentence. يصلي. يا. لماذا يا? Why is it يا? لأن الفاعل مذكر. Because the door is masculine. Who is the door? Muhammad. How do you know Muhammad is a door? تنتهي بالضمة. Because he ends with the ضمة. That's it. So since Muhammad is masculine, then we have to use the masculine pronoun, which is huwa, the ya. Tusalli Aisha. Tusalli istakhdamna ta. We use the ta here. Limada. Why do you use the ta? Li'anna al-fa'il mu'annaf. Because the doer is feminine. Ain al-fa'il. Where is the doer? Aisha. How do you know? Tantahi bil-dhamma. She ends in a dhamma. That's it. She ends in dhamma, so she is the doer. We have to use the feminine pronoun, which is the ta. Oh, yeah. You guys understand that, yeah, Juan? No. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, inshallah, ta'ala, we'll do one more sentence, be the light ta'ala. He says, Khamisan, fifthly, Ajib kama fi namudhaji. Answer as they come in the example. An namudhaju. Example. Hal ta'arifu as sakana. He says, Do you know the residence? Or it can be the dwelling? Or it can be the house? Do you know it? The word as second can be a house. It can be a room, anywhere you live. Write this benefit down, Yahuan. 
the word as second as second can be the house it can be the dwelling anywhere you live basically if you can live there it's a second if you have one little cardboard box may Allah forbid that's your second that's your bait that's your house because you live there anywhere you live it's your second so the word as second is the house the dwelling it can be a room it can be a, wherever you live or someone lives in it's a second from the verb sakana which means to live from the verb sakana which means to live All right so he says hal ta'rif second do you know the house do you know it the dwelling do you know it he says asifun i'm sorry la a'rifuhu i do not know it now, this is one of the most eloquent drills you can do and we did this earlier ya Juan. and we have to send the new students their earlier lessons ya Juan, so they can catch back up where you substitute the noun for the pronoun even english is very eloquent to do that likewise in arabic instead of saying for example instead of saying you say for example did you pray Al Fajr. So you're talking to your wife. You say, Did you pray Fajr? She says, Yes, I prayed Al Fajr. That's the everyday one on one English. Did you pray Fajr? Yes, I prayed Fajr. So now to say it with eloquence, Did you pray Fajr? She says, Yes. And then she substitutes the noun for the pronoun. He says, yes, I prayed it. It's very eloquent in English and in Arabic. But you take the noun and you don't say the noun again. It was already mentioned. So there's no need to say it again. So you replace it with the pronoun. So in Arabic, you say, you're talking to your wife, you say, hell. Salati al Fajr. Al Fajr. You say, did Al Salati al Fajr. Did you pray al Fajr? So Fajr is mentioned already. It's already here. Did you pray Fajr? Al Salati al Fajr. So now she wants to speak with eloquence. This is the drill today. She says, Naam. Falay to her. She says, Yes, I prayed it. And this is going to be our next drill, inshallah. Falay to her. She says, Yes, I prayed it. And it's very eloquent to do that, yeah. Allah does it a lot in the Quran. Likewise, the Messenger of Allah in the Sunnah. To substitute the noun. For the pronoun. Very eloquent to do. So he says, Hal ta'rifu second? Do you know the place? He says, Asifun la a'rifuhu. I'm sorry, I do not know it. So to substitute the noun for the pronoun, that's our next drill, inshallah. What I want the people to have the book to do, ya Juan, is we're going to give you some classwork, inshallah. And we have to give more of that. So you brothers that have the book for our new students, we have to make sure everyone has the book. If you don't have the book, leave your email or you can text me your email or leave it here. At, at, and, and so I can send you the make sure everyone has the book. Inshallah. All right, I, got, I got one more question. That'll be it for me. Just, just, just go back to the, the next lesson for a second. All right. You see... Uh, Ta'arifu. No. Mm. 
Is that kind of like the same way you use uh, uh, what, what 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 would Tarif be? Would it be in the present tense or the or Tarif uh, Mutara? Would that be? It's in the it's in the Mutara. It's a present tense. It's a present tense. So so with every pre so so with like every prefix. Is either in the present, is in either in the present tense, masculine. I mean, a male or female. Uh, the doer of it, yes. Yeah. Yep. So, like, what would be? Okay, uh, evidently this is uh, tarifu. You know, the tarifu part. So here the ta. Okay, the tricky part, yeah, Juan. Uh. Uh, and that's why we're trying. We're trying our best. I'm only mentioning this because our beloved brother mentioned it, but. The tricky part with the pronouns is that it's not a lot of them. So sometimes some has to be shared. So the ta here, ta'arifu. Right? Ta'arifu. Here, it can be one of two things. Here it can be, she knows. It's feminine. Ta, feminine. Right? Play it. Or this tag can also mean you. The you. You're talking directly to someone. So it can also be you know. Masculine. That's why we mentioned that the verbs are the most difficult thing to master. It's where most students stop. So we're just going to go step by step, yeah, Juan. Okay, so tag can be either or. So tag can mean, it can be here, and it can be you masculine. Right, right, right. Okay, okay, okay. What? Noted. No. Yeah. And that's in the no way. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Huh? That's in the present tense. tense. And it's in the present tense, yep. Because remember, yeah, Juan, I'll give an example. The pronouns are only going to be the Aleph, or the ta, or the ya, or the noon. That's it. There's no more pronouns. Alif, ta, ya, noon. Meaning in the beginning of the verb, of the present tense, it's either going to start with alif, or ta, or ya, or noon. That's it. But there's so many other people to be referred to. So these four, some have to be shared. The alif is always going to be ana. He's never going to be shared. He's by himself. The ya and the ta can be off uh, one. The ta, yes, and the ya can be shared. The noon is never going to be shared. But this ta and the ya can be a few things. So pay attention there. Don't learn that every time I see a ta only, it means here. No, that's a possibility. And it can also mean you masculine. So pay attention there. But we'll get there, Juan. You guys are jumping a little. Go step by step, inshallah. <laughs> May Allah bless you all. Same to you. Little by little, Juan. Yeah. So get back to the point. And we're not going to do the exercise now. We're going to say that for the next class. But I want you to do for homework. You only have an exception for you if you don't have the book. Hopefully by tonight, everyone will have the book. You have the book, you're going to go to page 56. 56. And I want you to write the sentences here. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sentences. All I want you to do is write them out. That's it. So you're going to go from 56. You have one, two, three here. Oh, why is it small? You have one, two, three here. And then you have the following page. Five to eight. That's it. All I want you to do, yeah, Juan, is write each sentence out and try to translate them. And then we're going to go over them in the next lesson. So I want you to write eight sentences out one time. That's it. And we're going to go over them together. This drill is what? Changing the noun to the pronoun. That's it. But there are two things we want to go over. And we'll explain the next lesson, inshallah. All right. I'm going to stop there, Juan.
So remember, leave your emails if you don't have the book. I believe everyone has it, but we have a, a few new students in Ikhwan. If they don't have the book, leave your email so I can make sure you have the book, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, we're on page number 56. You're going to write down the first eight sentences one time and try to translate them. Make sure you know the words, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll go over them in the next lesson. ta'ala. And the last thing, Ikhwan, we may make the classes a little earlier than Maghrib, maybe 6.30 or so, as some of the people have said. That it may be a little late to start at Maghrib time. So we'll see, inshallah. So we'll pray about it and we'll inform the people bin the light time. Alright. Wa subhanaka lahum wa bihamdi ka shadu an la ilaha la anta starfur wa atu wa ilayk. Wa nasabtu fa min Allah wa nakhtatu fa min nafsi. Anything we said that's correct is from Allah. Anything we said is incorrect is from ourselves. Wa jazakum Allah khayran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, so I'm not going to lie, you were better catch it.